All right, guys, this is the 20 things home buyers will hate about your house if you're looking to list it or if it's actually listed. I'm going to give you 20 things that I'm hearing from my buyer clients whenever I take them through properties on what they are telling me. They're giving me feedback that they don't like about the house. Hey, guys, I'm Devin with uh, down here in Brevard County. I'm a realtor down here. Uh, Brevard County is Merritt Island, Merritt uh, Bureau Beach, we've got uh, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, Titusville. Basically, think about this Space Canaveral area, uh, Cape Canaveral, uh, the ports there, and over Patrick Air Force Base. So think about those areas. Also, up here in the Indianapolis metro area, I'm a real tour broker up here. So guys, I just want to give some feedback here. And if you're looking to list your house, whether you list for me or not, this is a great list to go through your house and actually take care of because I'm giving value back. This is the purpose of the video is to give value back into the real estate industry because if I can help somebody else's house that potentially that actually sold with another realtor broker, um, guys, it's actually going to help the market. So if our houses are in tip top condition looking great, it's going to help the market for everybody. It's going to get prices up. But if you start thinking this is a seller's market and I don't want to do anything to my house and don't think I need to because I'm going to get it because inventories are low, you know, there is that possibility. But your neighbor down the road is going to and most likely watch this video and seen the top 20 here. And they went through here. It's like, you know what? I'm going to take care of all this stuff. Plain and simple. I'm going to take care of it. I don't care, you know, Joe Smith, the Jones down the road didn't do it. You know, they can leave their house that way, but mine's going to sell. That's what they're thinking. That's what these sellers are thinking, guys. So, all right, I'm going to give you the top 20 here, and we're going to go right down through here. We're going to go pretty fast. Um, if you don't get it, I'm going to actually put these down in the description. Make sure you like the video. Uh, hit the notification bell. Make sure you subscribe. Do all that stuff. Make sure you leave a comment. Leave a question down below, too. All right, so here we are with the top 20, starting from one all the way down to 20. I'm going to add a little bit to these as we're going, so stay with me. Stay with me, all right? Stay with me, guys. All right, make sure I got my hat on. Ready to do some business here. All right, so number one, room clutter and dirt. Guys, that's explanatory. Declutter the closets, declutter the house, start packing because you're going to be going through, you're actually going to be in a closing within 30 to 45, 60 days, you know, in this market. You could be out that quick. And before you know it, you'll be like, oh, shoot, I need to pack. All right, start packing now, declutter your house, clean up the dirt. All right. Uh, if you have any converted rooms, except for bedroom or office space, that's cool. All right. If you have a bedroom that changes over to an office space, the, the times now that a lot of homes have offices in homes, people do work from home. Uh, they work remotely. But if you took an old garage, if you took a garage, especially an attached garage, maybe you had two car and you split it off. If you had a one car and you converted it over and you don't have a place for somebody to park their vehicle and the house down the road does. Guess which one's going to win? All right, this is the feedback I'm getting from my buyers here. That's what my buyers tell me. They don't want any converted rooms over. Uh, they want their garage. It's plain and simple. All right, your personal interests and wall art, remove it. People don't want to see your pictures. They don't want to see a picture of your kids. And, you know, especially parents, if you do have little ones, you don't know who's walking through your house. They could be scoping out the house. You know, I screen my buyers. All right, I get to know them. Um, but... I can't help if they're possibly scoping out a house. I can't help that. They could be telling friends. That's just some things you need to think about, guys. I tell my sellers, remove all your per personal pictures, especially of your kids. Remove them, okay? Might as well do it. Go back to number uh, number three, personal interest. Uh, number one, the declutter. Um, get rid of the stuff. Start packing it up. All right. Number four, crowded countertops. Whatever the lineage is, three items. Three, that's it. If it's dirty, pack it up. Get rid of it. Guys, you're going to have to 
live very minimalist. Think of it that way. Declutter, pack your stuff up, get rid of it, get it off the counters, wipe those counters down. All right. Excessive house, indoor house plants. Uh, number five. Number six, unpleasant odors, tobacco and, pet, and pets. All right. So if you smoke in the house, it's going to be noticeable as soon as you walk in, especially for a non-smoker. And there's a lot of people that are aware. And there's guys, smokers, I'm sorry, you know, it's your choice, your right to do that. But it's going to have a negative effect on the your ability to sell your house to most likely a non-smoker, especially with somebody that has kids. They don't want to bring them in to a house that has smoke smoke stains, smoke smell in the house. You're going to have to get rid of that. You will possibly have to repaint, possibly use kills, get a professional in there, and they will repaint for you. You might have to paint the ceilings as well. Carpet, try professionally cleaning it. If you still have that smoke, that odor um, from tobacco or pets, um, you might have to replace all that carpet. Yep, you might have to. All right. Uh, dark rooms, what that means is open up your windows, open up the windows, open up the blinds. I mean, don't open up the windows if it's especially three degrees out and it gets cold in there. Don't do that. Um, lift your blinds up, let that natural light in, uh, especially when you're having showings, you want to do that. You want to turn on all your lights. You want to make these dark spaces look really bright. Okay. Uh, as number seven, no privacy for showings. Sellers don't follow, don't be there for showings. If you don't trust who's coming into the house, have your listing agent there representing you and they don't have to follow everybody around. So whenever you have a listing and you have a showing, I tell my clients, put up all your personal possessions, your firearms, jewelry, medications, put those all up. All right. You don't want those laying out because little fingers can grab that stuff, and especially a firearm. Put those stuff up. Put them in a safe. All right. Uh, where were we? Unpleasant no dark rooms, no privacy, messy neighbors. You can't do anything about that. Hopefully you have a good rapport with them. It's like, hey, listen, if I can get my house sold here pretty quick at the price we have it listed for, if not more, it's going to help your value. That's what you, the conversation as a seller, you need to have to your neighbors. It's like, hey, help me out because it's going to help you out. All right. Number 10, overgrown landscaping. If you have a furry bush, cut it back. Keep this G-rated, guys. This is G-rated. Cut back the bushes. Get rid of all the, the overgrowth. Trim everything back. Make it look clean, fresh. Think of a, a builder's model home. Whenever you come up, everything looks clean, manicured, well-kept. All right. All right, I didn't want to cough into the mic because it would pick that up. Uh, whenever I get talking for a while, and I don't have any water, I forgot to bring water up. Whenever I get talking, I get really dry mouth and, and uh, start going monotone for hopefully I'm not monotone right now. Uh, number 11, still with the, it goes hand in hand with number 10, messy front of the home, overall curb appeal, pick up the bikes, pick up the toys. Um, I know you have kids, just clean up the front because whenever, that is the initial, uh, when I tell my buyers now, they're going out and actually looking at the house. They're driving the neighborhood and they're looking at the house going, ooh, I don't know. Look at all that trash out in front. Look at all the, uh, the bikes and all that kind of stuff. You know, do you want to do, do, do uh, see this house? Do you want to call Devin up and schedule a showing? Oh, I don't know about that. That's the conversation that the buyer is going to have. All right. Now, if they really like the area and the potential of the house because they did a virtual tour online or they seen some pictures, they're looking at it on their phone and they're going, oh, you know, I really like this. I like the interior. You know, we can overlook the outside. Guys, not all the buyers are going to do that. All right, so take care of the messy front, the overall cur curb appeal, number 11. Number 12, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting on main floor space. If you have wall-to-wall -wall, wall -wall carpeting here in 2021, guys, you're going to have to replace it plain and simple because the buyer of today likes it where they walk in and there's no carpeting on the main flooring because everybody wants to walk in and walk around with their shoes. When you have carpeting, they don't. All right. I still, you know, even if I had wood or, or vinyl plank or whatever it might be, laminate, I would take my shoes off. All right. 
Uh, Wild Wild Carpeting, uh, number 13, lucky number 13, outdated light fixture. If you have outdated light fixtures, guys, it might cost you a few hundred bucks to change them all out. Just do it. It's pretty simple DIY. All right. Uh, bugs and other critters around the property, especially in the house, clean them up. Out, out, outrageous number 19 or 15, outrageous wall paint color palette. <sighs> All right, what's popular right now? The uh, gray, light gray, grayish, beige, or whites. I had to burp. Sorry. Hey guys, it, I'm I'm not a professional here when it comes to public speaking, um, so I have like burps and coughs and things like that. Anyhow, uh, stay with me. All right, stay with me, guys. Uh, yeah, outrageous wall paint. Get rid of the pinks, the blues, the purples, the greens. Get all that. You might like it because that's your personality. The yellows, the oranges. Get rid of it. Uh, the new buyer might not. Have a professional painter come in. It could pay, you know, probably be a few thousand dollars. I don't know. Get that uh, quote. Have them come in, and they can knock it out within a few days. All right. Outrageous wall paint. Number 16, uh, wallpaper and wood paneling. Wallpaper is making a comeback, but it's not on every wall. Um, it's usually just on a, like a little accent area instead of the accent paint. Um, they're doing it actually, uh, wallpaper is very tactful. It goes along with the, um, the decor in the house, the overall ambience, that kind of thing, you know. So don't be putting on all the walls. Uh, Guys, wood, wood paneling. It, I don't think it's it's been around since seventies. Uh, yeah, seventies. If you have wood paneling, paint it. Have a professional come in and paint it. All right, paint it back to the colors of the walls what they should be. You know, if you got the gray, grayish, uh, white, whatever it might be, paint it. Um, that's a lot cheaper than going through and have to removing all the wood paneling. But if you have to, maybe it's just one whole wall that has wood paneling. Painting would be easy. Um, take it down, put up some drywall, finish it off. Okay, guys, like I said, this is what my buyer clients are telling me. They're telling me, I just didn't come up with this. All right, this is what my buyers, I've heard over time, they're telling me about what they like and dislike about a house. All right, so this is... <clears throat> this is what they hate about your house. So if you are watching this video and I'm giving back to the community of the real estate community, if you're watching this video and you're like, ah, oh, you know, there's a realtor by the name of Deb and you're telling your listing agent, he came up with these 20 things here. You didn't talk to me about this, but what do you think about that? And then the listing broker, potential listing broker, they're like, oh, why didn't I think about that? You know? Devin, I'm interviewing with Devin, and Devin has a one and leg up. You know, he's got me all prepped, ready to go, and he's, you know what, I'm, I like him better than you because you didn't think of this kind of thing, and you didn't guide me through helping to buy or helping to sell my house. Guy, I am representing you, giving you suggestions. It isn't advice that you have to do it. It's suggestions if you are looking to list your house and sell your house for the top dollar, these are suggestions that I hear from my buyers that tell me what they hate about houses, all right? Mismatched appliances, number 17. Um, you could go in there and you could put a $3,000 appliance package into your home. It'll make a huge difference when you have everything that's on the same manufacturer manufacturer and same color, you know, same stainless steel, if it's all black or if it's all white, whatever it might be. Make sure they're all the same, all right? Mismatched appliances. Change them out. $3,000 will help you sell your house over your competition down the road. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be the last house standing and somebody going, well, I guess I'll pick this. I love the neighborhood, but you know what? I'm going to pick this, but I really hate the appliances. Now I'm going to put $3,000 into a house as soon as I move in. You know, they're going to ask for a discount some way on that property because they're like, you know, down the road, for 250000 that house down there, three bedroom, two bath at 2,000 square feet. Um, it had all new appliances. I'm going with that house. 
that's what your potential buyers are comparing against you. Make sure you change out those mismatched appliances. Number 18, drop ceilings. If you have drop ceilings in the basement, there isn't too much you can do about that because you most likely went in there and um, did it to cover up the wiring and plumbing and the rafters, uh, the support beams, right? So most likely that's why you did that. If you have broken ones or stained, make sure you replace them. Just fix them, guys. It's simple, right? Have, if you don't want to do it, have a professional come in. Most likely painters, they do that kind of stuff as well. Uh, old HVAC system, um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, your system, your heater, your air conditioning, whether it's your heater or your heat pump. Guys, if you have one that's working great for you, I hope you, if, if it's like 10, 15, 5, 10, if it's one year old, I hope you've been taking care of it with me maintenance records i hope so because that's what the buyers are going to be they're going to be like uh when was the last time has somebody came out and inspected this system good question let me get up with the realtor a listing realtor and ask him if he knows oh i don't know um, let me get with my uh seller here that's usually what happens guys that shouldn't be that if you have a house make sure you take care of your system make sure you have somebody at least come out once a year to do a checkup. It's gonna cost you a few hundred bucks, so what? But it's going to be a lot of preventive maintenance that you could you know, foresee, get it taken care of before something happens, all right? And you'll have those records that you'll be able to present to a buyer or to the buyer's agent and it's like, hey, no, we just had one a month ago. They had this fixed, this fixed. And yeah, they change out the furnace filter regularly as well. There's filters out there, especially those small one inch ones uh, that needs replaced every month. Do not let those get dirty, guys. If you have the big four inch like I have, it's three to four months. Sometimes you go up to six months depending on the time of the year. All right. Uh, HVA system, just because it's working for you, it might not work. Um, it, it's actually going to be a detractor for a potential buyer when they come in here. They'll be looking at it like, uh, that house still down the road we just looked at, everything is the same, apples to apples. This one has an old HVAC system. The other one down there is just, it's not new, but it's newer. Um, we're going to make an offer on that other property. And then the listing agent over here on your property, you're going to be going to them. It's like, hey, why isn't my house selling? Well, you know, you have an older HVAC system, right? Well, why didn't you tell me that? I could have had that. I would have been willing to change that out for five, six grand. If it's going to help your house sell and you got enough equity in there and you have enough room in there to do it, guys, it's a no-brainer. You know, if you're going to pocket, if you have enough equity in that house and you're going to pocket, you know, 50, 100, 150, 200, 200, whatever it might be, it's going to help you sell your house, new appliances, new HVAC system. Those things matter. And number 20, please remove all your pets and all their pet toys and bowls. All right. I'm, like I said, I'm going to put this down in the description. You can print it off. You can copy it off. I don't care. I'm just giving value back to the real estate community. So that way you can get your prices on your house up and it's going to help your neighbors drive the prices up and keep the prices up too. You know, this isn't driving them up intentionally. This is to help keep prices up because people pay for quality products. All right. People pay for quality products. So guys, hopefully uh, this list really helped you out. Um, look forward to, uh, if you are looking to sell a house, uh, whether you're in the Indianapolis metro area or down the Brevard County in Florida, uh, feel free to give me a call. That contact information will be down there. Love to help you out. Um, I'd love to uh, consult, set up a consultation time for you and uh, go through this. Let me just walk through the property and from my perspective of what my buyers have been telling me and what they're looking for, the feedback I received from them, I can pass on to you. We can walk through, we'll do a pre-listing appointment walk through and it's like, yeah, this, uh, remember we were talking about the outdated uh, fixtures on number 13. Guys, you might wanna change these out. It costs you a few hundred bucks, all right? So guys, uh, purpose of the video, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment do down below if you got any questions. Uh, you'll have my phone number down there too. Feel free to text me, leave a comment down there, ask any questions you might have. 
Um, look for the next video comes out. Make sure you subscribe to this video. Hit the notification bell. Usually with other people's videos, you see that in front. I just want to start and give them value and put this at the end because if you actually watch this this far, you're like, oh shoot, you know, I like what Devin's putting out. You know, as a realtor, he must know what he's doing because he gets a lot of feedback from his buyer clients, which I'm able to give to my listing clients, uh, my sellers. So guys, hopefully you found some value out of this. I uh, got more videos coming and uh, we'll talk soon. I'm out of here. We'll see you.